Okay, so let's add the functionality for flipping the player when we change direction. So we need to open up our script again. And inside our script, we'll have to add a new, um, new field up here. And it's going to be a private bool. And it's going to be called facing right. So this one indicates if the player is facing to the right. Um, and we'll have to look at that every time we switch his direction, if we're facing right or not, so that we can flip him um, towards the right direction. So we need to create a function underneath handle movement. We'll make a new private void called flip. And this flip function also needs to have the horizontal uh, access to this horizontal uh, variable. So we need to make a float and call the flip. Uh, not flip, let's call it horizontal like this one up here. There we go. So now we can also access it from within our flip. Okay, what we're going to do is that if we go to Unity, we'll see if we look at the player, you'll see that he has a scale of one in the x axis. If we change that from one to minus one, you'll see that he flips to the opposite direction here. And we will actually have to do that from our script. Whenever the player changes direction, we will switch from one to minus one so that he changes his uh, facing direction here. So let's just keep it on one. And that means if it's on one, then his facing right is equal to true whenever we start up our game. So inside uh, start here, we can say that facing right is true from the get go. So right off the bat, he's always facing to the right. Okay, so let's have a look at this flip function here. We are going to make an if statement in here that says if horizontal is larger than zero. So if it is larger than zero, well, then we are moving to the right because if it's less than zero, then we are moving to the left because it goes negative when we move to the left. So if it's larger than zero and we're not facing right, so we make it negative here by writing exclamation mark in front of facing right, well, then we need to flip him around. Um, but we will also have to do it if this is like this is the same thing or so if the horizontal lies at zero and we're not facing right or the horizontal is less than zero and we are facing right well then we need to flip our character first of all we will have to change the facing right from uh, false to true or from true to false depending on the value it has to do this we can say facing right is equal to the opposite of facing right, negative of facing right. So this line of code will make it false if it's true and will it will make it true if it's false. This changes the value so that we know the, the correct outcome of this if statement whenever we click the buttons. Okay, so we need to multiply the scale with minus one because if you have a value and you multiply it with minus one, you'll get the same value in negative, right? So one multiplied by minus one is minus one, minus one multiplied by minus one is one. So on that, uh, that's how we can flip him from left to right. <clears throat> okay, so let's say vector free, call the scale. This is the scale of the player is equal to transform.local scale. So now we are creating a reference to um, the player's local scale up here, one, one, one. So we need to get the X out of this. Then we say the scale dot X multiplied equal to minus one. So now we are multiplying X with minus one. And when we've done that, we can say transform that local scale equals scale so now we add that scale we just calculated we change the x value of it and then we added it to the player scale so now we can actually call this flip here after we handle our movement I guess because we need to know what direction we're facing before we try to flip him then we can say um, flip and horizontal so let's save this 
and if we jump back into the game now we will be able to flip the player from left to right depending on the key that we are pressing as you can see here so if he's going left now he's looking to the left if he's going right well then he's looking to the right yeah so that's it for this part of the tutorial in the next part we will have him play a movement animation when we move from left to right instead of just staying in idle and of course we'll need him to jump back into idle when he's done moving